Donna and Ernesto, the Berta and the exclusive. Will Alinghi ever return to the America's Cup? World Series reshuffle in the Windy City. Aquabiker season kickoff. It's a short road to Rio. And now in the newsroom, here is Mia Sharan. NC Sports, plunge into the action. Welcome to the latest edition of NC Sports. I'm Mia Charan and it's the peak of the season for water sports. And today we've got a very special program for you, packed with results, insight and exclusives. So let's go straight to the lineup. Find out why the Swiss do it better at the Boldor Classic in the Alps. Nautical Channel exclusive interviews from Lake Geneva with Donna and Ernesto Bertarelli. Yes, we pop the question, will Alinghi ever go back to the Cup? On that, major surprises at the America's Cup, World Series in Chicago. Jack Griffin links in with the insider take. Plus, it's a short road to Rio, both for sailors and rowers. Aquabike season kicks off in Italy, and Mukfong wins Catalonia for the overall lead in PW Slalom. And so much more. Make no mistake, though landlocked high up in the Alps, there's no lack of tradition here. Quite the contrary, this country has already gained its rightful place among the greatest sailing nations by winning it all from the lakes to the oceans, including two America's Cup. We're talking about Switzerland, of course, and the Bol d'Or Mirabeau, a regatta that began back in 1939 and has since become a national event, drawing thousands to the shores of Lake Geneva. Four hundred and twenty-eight boats gathered on Lake Geneva and yet another amazing spectacle of sails last the Saturday for La Boule d'Or, a symbolic race that brings together the very best of Switzerland's sailing tradition and a national treasure. Swiss uh, sailing family Bertarelli with Donna cheering on her spindrift ladycat from the shore and big brother Ernesto on board his Alinghi fought it out to the very end uh, for real-time honors in this 62 nautical mile regatta. After eight and a half hours, uh, just uh, three minutes uh, separated the two D-35s at the finish line, with Donna's team led by skipper Xavier Reville and Erwan Israel overtaking Ernesto and his new talent Arnaud Sarofagis on the very last jibe. Third place finish for Christian Walls of Mobimo. DCF1 class, a triumvirate helmed by Yves Tournier, was declared the overall winner of this La Bolle d'Or Mirabeau on corrected time, ahead of veteran offshore pro Dominique Wavre on Ardizio, also a TCF1, and Zulu, the TCF4 helmed by Claude Laval. Greenwater team snatched the lead by a single minute in the historic Surprise class, while the Grand Surprise victory went to the Meahuna crew. Well, a spectacular sight on Lake Geneva for the Bold Door. Now, here we are, back in the studio, with NC Sports Director Jerome Lingri. Hello. Hello, Mia. So, the Swiss do it better? Are you sure, as an Italian, I may beg to differ? Well, you certainly fell for our provocation. Obviously, <laughs> we mean it's sailing, and uh, definitely the Swiss do have all the cars for saying that they do do it better. I mean, the Bold Door, as we just saw, is uh, the representation of what the very best of regatta that Switzerland has to offer with some of the greatest talents. Of course, we're talking about a nation that has won on the lakes, on the oceans, and even on two America's Cups. So that's not a small feat. Not many nations can say that. And of course, we had um, Bertarellis coming up, both on Lingi and Spindrift. Mm -hmm. There was one thing that the Swiss don't have is an Olympic win, and that hasn't happened since 1968. But okay. who knows, there's always a real. We saw a very interesting real-time finale with Spindrift overtaking Alinghi at the very last stretch. Always plenty of sibling rivalry between the Bertarellis. Now, if you agree, I would start by listening to what Donna had to say at the end of the race. 
super proud of them because they, they have done an amazing race. I think it, they really merit to, to win. Uh, they have kept the rhythm and uh, really fantastic. I'm really proud of them. Very nice race. Yeah. Happy, I think, you know, really, really super happy. Yes. Well, Jero, the Bertarelli saga couldn't have played out more vividly than in this year's Boldor Mirabeau. I mean, after all, these uh, two brothers uh, are both managers and sailors. Uh, Donna, of course, is leading, uh, let's call it, the race beating the family on the oceans with uh, Spindrift 2 and her life partner, Jan Guichard. They don't only race on the Maxi Trimer and Spindrift 2, but they, uh, where they've set many records but they also race on uh, the D35s like here at the Bold Door or on the M32s at the World Match Racing Tour, so quite complete. On the other hand, we have Ernesto, uh, who is of course twice of America's Cup winner, Anna Lingi, who is now back at the Extreme Sailing Series, now foiling on the GC32, so a very interesting and busy year for the Bertarelli family. And the NC Sports team managed to pick up quite an exclusive on the ground in Geneva, is that right? Well, yes, big uh, special on the Bull Door coming up on Nautical Channel. And we got a chance to ask uh, quite a few questions uh, to Ernesto Bertarelli, the guy that won the America's Cup 31 and 32, and the guy that slammed the door on Larry Ellison after losing America's Cup 33 in San Francisco. So shall we check out some more excerpts Absolutely. before the complete interview? Let's. So the Swiss do it better on America's Cup, on the ocean. It's pretty remarkable that a landlocked nation such as Switzerland has so much success in sailing. So why is that in your opinion? Well, sailing is a sport in Switzerland that we practice uh, when we're not skiing. So uh, in the winter we ski, in the, in the summer uh, we sail. We have a lot of uh, beautiful lakes. We have lakes which have uh, wonderful uh, thermal winds and uh, so sailing is quite good actually and uh, we all uh, love that we have uh, fascinating boats usually very very powerful and uh, you know multi-hole racing to some extent was invented here on Lake Geneva. So how did it go on the race course? There was uh, plenty of wind for Lake Geneva we finished in uh, 8 hours and uh, 30 minutes so it's pretty good time it was a very very close race uh, we didn't have a great start, but we made a very good comeback and uh, led most of the way. And uh, as always, uh, on the lake, you have to be able to transition from one system to the, uh, to the next. And uh, it was down to one uh, jibe. We uh, didn't jibe, the other team did, and uh, that's the story. <laughs> Well, that was some great material, and there's more coming up. That's right. What does Ernesto Bertarelli really think about this America's Cup? And will we ever see a Lingi back on the cup? Well, if you're curious to find out, stay tuned. Thank you for hanging out with us, Jero. It was my pleasure, and remember, on the 8th of July at 9 p.m., Boldor is coming to Nautical Channel. Great special, don't miss it. The fleet of the Figaro Solo is now getting ready for the start. This weekend in Deville, four legs are scheduled for this French classic, including a first stop in Cowes. Let's check out what's going on dockside and who are the 2016 favorites. From Normandy's uh, Deauville across the channel to Cowes, uh, then back to Paimpol uh, Les Ardreux, and finally down to the Bay of Biscay to La Rochelle uh, for some inshore racing. The Figaro Solo is back on the water starting uh, this Sunday with 39 uh, top skippers at the ready on the Benetos. Big uh, rematch expected uh, between uh, Thierry Chavagny en Gédima and Nicolas Lemven uh, with uh, Generali, respectively first and uh, second on their last uh, clash at the AG2R across the Atlantic. But a number of contenders could spoil the party, including five women sailors. A classic uh, since 1970, La Solitaire du Figaro has historically been the cesspool for some of the greatest of French Ocean sailors. La Seu hosts the second round of the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup. 
Aquabike pros rumble in southern Italy, Mort Fontaine's Costa Brava, and bumps off Yakino at the PWA Catalonia. Here are the top events now making waves on the NC Sports Briefs. Round two of the 2016 ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup wrapped up in La Soie d'Orgel in the Spanish Pyrenees, with local paddlers picking up a number of medals. In the women's camp, Spaniard Mylene Chirot took home the K1 gold, while Jessica Fox from Australia captured silver, and German Ricarda Funk grabbed bronze. Spaniards Nuria Villarubla and Miran Lascano earned gold and silver respectively in the C1 class, with Australia's Noemi Fox taking bronze. On the men's side, Slovakia's Alexander Slavkovsky emerged victorious in the C1, followed by France's Denis Gargochanou and Czech Republic's Vítězslav Gabas in second and third place, respectively. And in the K1, Gabas's compatriot Vit Prindis earned gold, while Slovakia's Jakub Grigor took silver, and Peter Kauser of Slovenia picked up bronze. Tens of thousands are lined up on the terraces and docks of Otranto Harbor in southern Italy for the 2016 UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship season kickoff. Denmark's debutante Marcus Jorgensen outraced the veterans on the GP1 runabout by winning both heats and taking the event title ahead of Sweden's Johansson and Britain's Burchell. Tight four-way battle in Ski GP1 with Austria's Kevin Reiter and Nacho Armillas of Spain taking first and second after edging out by just two points Jeremy Poré and Estienne Scheitlern in third and fourth, Sweden's power girl Emma Nelly Ortendahl dominated the ladies' ski GP1 ahead of the whole French squad with Menard, Poré and Morlais. The Aquabike Circus is now moving to Deia in Spain for round two from the 23rd to the 25th of June. Top honors went to Pierre Mortefon, who captured his first win of the season. Round two of the 2016 PWA Men's Slalom World Championship came to a close in Costa Brava, Spain, after a final day that saw some dramatic changes in wind and rankings. The Frenchman led the event from the opening day and now moves into the number one slot in the overall standings. Israeli rider Arnon Degan, who went into the final in the lower echelons, muscled his way into second place, followed by Italian Andrea Kuki, who finished third to earn the first ever podium finish of his career. Compatriot Matteo Iacchino, who placed seventh, slips into second in the overall rankings, while Englishman Ross Williams maintained his number three position despite an eighth place showing in Costa Brava. The windsurfing worlds head to the Grand Canaries July 3rd to 9th for round three. Reshuffle in Chicago and some big surprises at the America's Cup World Series. More with Ernesto Bertarelli on the Cup. Exclusive, will Lingi ever return? Last stops before Rio, the UK's pre-Olympic classic in Weymouth. NC Sports will be right back after the break. Cap sizes for both Oracle and ETNZ set the stage. So all forecasts just went out the window last weekend as round three of the America's Cup World Series offered some major upsets. First, the recap from Chicago. And when we come back, America's Cup expert Chuck Griffin will have the insight.
Nathan Outridge, Ian Percy, and gang had finally plenty to celebrate as their Artemis racing team grabbed a huge overall victory at the Louis Vuitton America's Cup World Series in Chicago. The Aussie Sweet blend finally yielded its fruits in another tricky metropolitan stopover in the USA. A win, two seconds, and a fourth place was a demonstration of newfound consistency in a three-day event that offered many prestigious upsets. The Chicago community responded in kind, with thousands of fans watching a spectacular show from Navy Pier that began with two capsizes on Friday's practice day for Oracle Racing USA and World Series leaders Emirates Team New Zealand. More surprises soon came with Dean Barker's the SoftBank Team Japan, opening it with a win in race one and closing with another in race four on Sunday for a third overall on Lake Michigan. This is an unexpected and somewhat odd leaderboard in the World Series, where among the top seeded only Ben Ainsley's Land Rover Bar managed to snatch second thanks to solid placements and a win in race two. While Oracle and ETNZ fell back on those scores. Lots of chasing also for Groupama Team France, closing last in Chicago. The Kiwis still lead for 2016 with the Americans and British now tied in second place. Next stop is Portsmouth in the UK starting July 21st. Hello Jack and welcome back on NC Sports. Thanks for being with us. Hi Mia, great to be here again. Now, the action was all in Chicago, obviously, for the AC World Series. What's your take on this round three weekend? Well, a couple of real points. One, very happy to see Dean Barker and Team Japan do so well, get on the podium for the first time. Two, really enthusiastic crowds. They had great weather on Saturday. They had to wait a little while to see the race. On Sunday, the weather was a lot cooler, but the racing was a lot hotter. It was really a great weekend for racing and some really entertaining racing too. Really a good show. Once again, there were big enthusiastic crowds. The people in the Chicago area really came out in force. Lots of enthusiasm and a really professionally run event by the event organizers. They got some entertaining racing on Sunday. They had to wait around a long time on Saturday because actually for the TV schedule, they lost another full day. That's another little piece of the bad news. Um, the boundaries turned into a bit of a problem once again with the tight course. It's the last race, three of the boats got penalties for going out of bounds. These results in Chicago show that really any one team can make it to the top. What's your take on uh, the balance of power three games away from the end of the season? Yeah, well, certainly Team Japan scored their first two race victories with the winning in the first and the fourth races. They're, that was their first podium, so that was really great news for them. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise, though, when you look at the lineup. Dean Barker steering, Chris Draper doing tactics, Jero Lomas and um, Eric Sayward uh, on the boat for trimming and grinding, and Fuku. Uh, as the one Japanese crewman who's also an experienced sailor. So not a surprise that they did really well. Balance of power, you've still got the big three and everybody else. Even though Artemis won their second regatta, they're still 30 points behind Team New Zealand. And if you look at the, the other team, the big three, which is Emirates Team New Zealand at the top of the leaderboard, BAR in second place, but tied on points with Oracle Team USA, those three teams are only separated by 10 points. So it's certainly gonna come down to how those three shake out, who carries the bonus points into the round robin qualifiers next year. Now, hang in there because as we have promised, we're about to listen to another portion of an exclusive interview with a Lingi's boss. So what does Ernesto Bertarelli think of the New Americas format? Let's check it out. Okay, and what sort of impression are you getting from the World Series now ongoing at the Americas? Well, the World Series, uh, I hope, are going to be a bit more exciting than they've been uh, so far. They haven't been very lucky with the weather. 
Certainly it doesn't make it easy when you put the race, race course right in the middle of New York. You would expect that the wind be blocked by uh, the skyscraper. Well, you know, I was always avid uh, for speed and speed on sailsboat. Actually, when uh, we won the America's Cup on monohull twice, I was already uh, racing multi-holes here on the lake, which were way faster than the boat we were using on the America's Cup. So now that um, the America's Cup has moved into foiling and that the world of sailing uh, has embraced speed, uh, it's all for me. I'm, I'm very happy about that uh, move. I think that uh, it makes sailing more exciting makes it a tiny bit more dangerous, but uh, the excitement and the exhilaration of going fast is worth it. Will we ever see Switzerland with a lingue back as the America's Cup? Not for the moment. Thank you so much. Never say never. Definitely not a no in my opinion. Not now, not tomorrow, but maybe sometime soon. What's your opinion? Well, I think there are a lot of people who'd like to see a Lingi back in the America's Cup. That's for sure. Not just here in Switzerland, but in a lot of places. The other thing is, my opinion is, if Ernesto comes back, you can be sure there'll be another top quality team on the racetrack. That would be really great to see again. Well, without a lingi, it, there's definitely something missing in this America's Cup, so let's keep our fingers crossed until 2021. Thank you for linking in with us, Jack, and we'll catch up soon. Hey, my pleasure. Look forward to talking with you again, Mia. With Rio 2016 now just six weeks away, sailors met up in Weymouth over the weekend for one of the last tests before the Games. And there could be no better place to weigh in the competition than the London 2012 race course. A 10 to 14 knot southwesterly swept to Weymouth Portland Bay for the fourth stop of six in the Sailing World Cup. 13 gold medals were up for grabs in this last official regatta before the Rio Olympics, now just days away. Croatia's Fantela and Marinic topped the men's 470, while in the ladies' race, Britain filled the podium, with gold going to Mills and Clark. Kiwis uh, Dunning Beck and uh, Simpson uh, pulled away in the 49ers, and in the 49er effects, Dobson and Ainsworth uh, stepped it up again for the UK. More British gold with Saxon and Groves in the NACRA 17, with Scott once again ruling the Finn class, and also with Thompson on the laser. Holland's Bowmaster topped a women's laser radial. A surprising Thomas Wilhelm dominated men's RSX for Germany. And in women's RSX, China's Pena Chen did even better with eight wins in nine races. It's finally happening. From Weymouth, national teams are now packing their bags on their way to Brazil and the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. They came, they saw, and they won. Everything. After taking first in both offshore legs, Gonzalo Botin and Pablo Santurde completed their Atlantic Cup mission last week by dominating the very last inshore racing stage in Portland, Maine. Here's the final recap. Spanish team Tails 2, skippered by Gonzalo Botin and Pablo Santurde, captured the 2016 Atlantic Cup, the longest offshore regatta in the Western Atlantic. The duo from Santander, Spain, won both the first and second double-handed offshore legs and two out of five inshore races.
Arundel, skippered by French sailors Catherine Pour and Antoine Carpentier, finished in second place, while Oak Cliff, skippered by USA's Liz Shaw and Libby Greenlag in leg one, and Hobie Ponting and Andrew O'Donnell in leg two, placed third. Of the nine teams competing in the One Design Class 40 regatta, two did not complete the crossing from Charleston, South Carolina to Portland, Maine via Brooklyn, New York. For the first time in its history, this year's Atlantic Cup saw the participation of an all-female team in leg one of the competition. Cliff divers get ready for a super show in downtown Copenhagen. Cat lovers, as in catamaran lovers, meet in Holland for the round taxel, while France waits for the Le Tour Voile. Plenty of action coming your way, mark the dates, it's all coming up on the NC Sports calendar. The 2016 Cliff Diving World Series heads to the heart of Copenhagen for round two on June 18th. Diving will take place from a specially built 27 meter platform atop the Danish capital's Opera House with spectacular views of the harbour and surrounding area. Australian rookie Rhiannon Ifland leads the series thus far in the women's camp with a surprise win in round one, while Mexican diver Jonathan Paradez holds the top spot in the men's standings. The 38th edition of Round Texel gets underway in the North Sea this June 25th. The regatta is reportedly the biggest catamaran race in the world with an annual average of 600 participants. This year, 250 crews will line up at the start and finish point in PAL 17 to see who will be the fastest to complete the 63 nautical mile loop around the island just north of the Netherlands. Strong tidal currents make Round Texel a highly tactical race that attracts both pros and amateurs. Some notable winners have been Reginald White, Darren Bundock and Glenn Ashby. Twenty-eight teams racing on identical Diam 24s will seek to follow in the footsteps of sailing greats like Michel Desjoyeaux, Jean-Pierre Dick, François Gabart and Franck Kama as the legendary Tour de France à Voile gets underway from July 8th to 31st. The regatta kicks off in Dunkirk in the north of France and will feature eight stopovers before wrapping up in Nice. This year all boats will be equipped with onboard cameras. Thanks for staying with us today on NC Sports. The season is really in full swing now and the events are stacking up. So we'll be back next week with the very best in water sports. Meanwhile, check out these great shots just in from the Girania Classic. I'm Mia Chiran, and remember, plunge into the action with NC Sports.